This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Check out the link down below to learn more. So Windows 11 definitely is not a perfect operating system. As a matter of fact, they keep forgetting to fix things as they keep updating the system. I mean, Windows 11 has been out for a really long time and they're just now starting to roll out things such as having your clock on multiple monitors and giving updates to applications like Notepad, which now finally has a dark mode. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is checking out five utilities that you can try out today to go ahead and improve your Windows experience. Based on polling I've done, uh, a good amount of you actually use Windows in one form or another, and I believe a lot of these applications do work with Windows 10 as well. So with that, the very first thing is going to be right here. This is QT tab bar in the normal Windows or a file explorer application. I recently covered an application called Files. That by far is one of the most beautiful, well-designed applications out there. But with that, it does have an issue here or there. If you're looking for only tabs and you want them to work well, this is a wonderful little program that you could go ahead and install. There is a lot of different configuration options. If I right click on it and go to the Q tab or the QT tab bar options here, there is a whole bunch of stuff going on. One thing I do recommend, this is a beta version to work with Windows 11. If you do install this, go under the subfolder menu and just completely disable that. It, it's just not working right. But if we kind of skim through here real quick, there's a whole bunch of different settings and things you could do to go ahead and customize this and just make it look better overall. So even here under appearance, you could really play around with it to actually make it kind of blend in a little bit better. I'm gonna cancel out for now. It's pretty simple. You could click this to open up this browse for folder window and select what folder you want to open in a new tab. So I just hit OK and now you can see I have the music tab open there. Alternatively, and what I will probably do, if you go ahead and hold down control and click on any folder, it's going to open up that folder in a new tab. And then you can easily jump back and forth between those. And of course, there's key bindings, things like that to make your uh, workflow as efficient as possible. All right, now real quick, I forgot to mention one awesome feature. Check out how nice this is for uh, media previews. Fantastic stuff. Now, next up, we're actually gonna take our focus to the bottom of the screen here, down by the clock. And if we click right here, we see our normal volume control. Nothing really too exciting about it, but if I go over here, we have a little utility called Ear Trumpet. What this will do is bring up all your open applications and allow you to independently set the volume levels on a per application basis. This is another thing that should just be a feature by now in Windows, which is not, but luckily you go ahead and install this fairly easily. If I go down and right click on it here, we could go to the settings, the volume mixer. So if I open this up, we have a whole separate window of all the different things that we could go ahead and do. Go back over here, right click on it, go to settings for example. There's really not too much going on here. We could set some shortcuts and that's really about it. We have some information here on the actual application, but really that's about it, a really, really useful tool. Now the next application we're gonna get into is almost as awesome as the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is a wonderful platform to go ahead and publish your websites with ease. If you're somebody who doesn't like really playing around in the terminal that much, you don't want to build your own custom servers and you just need a easy, intuitive web builder, Squarespace is a fantastic option for you. With integrated SEO and analytic tools, everything you're gonna need is in one place. And if you go ahead and use the link down below, you can get 10% off your first order. So click the link, check it out. Now with that, we're gonna dive into a tool called MS Edge Redirect. You probably know that you could search the web from your start menu down here. I'm gonna search up the actual application. So if I do MS Edge Redirect, and then down here under search the web, you can go ahead and click any of these to search the web. And normally by default, it's going to open that up in Bing. This, if I click it, you can see that it opened up in Google. And that's because when you install MS Redirect, you have the option to pick the search engine that it's gonna use and some more options. So if I go over to their GitHub right here and scroll down a bit, you can see a lot of the features that they have versus some of the other competitors including some search engine customization, ARM support, Windows 11 support, and more. And I think there's actual settings here. If I go to MS Edge Redirect, this right here might be it. There we go, cool. 
So here we have the active mode options, edge stable. We have the uh, service mode options, so you can hide services mode in the tray. Right here, this is the uh, actual search engine to change this. So you just check Bing search, and then you pick really whatever you want. You have DuckDuckGo if you're a little more uh, privacy focused. Uh, you can set up custom ones, Google, Yahoo, if you're old school. I just go ahead and stick with Google. We could change our weather. So I'm using weather.com instead of instead of MSN weather, which is nice. So it's a great little tool. You can go ahead and download it over here on the releases 10 hours ago. So it's a fairly up-to-date application. And now what we're gonna do is talk about package management. Now it's cool. Windows actually includes a command line package manager. It's called Winget. But if I do like Winget search Caden Live, for example, it's gonna go ahead and pull the Caden Live package. But to actually install it, I have to copy or use this exact package name, kde.cadenlive. And for other things, it gets a little more complicated. So searching 7-zip, for example, here you can see it's uh, like m2team.nanazip.preview. So it's not the best. So what I would recommend is use chocolatey or uh, choco is the command here. So you can see I'm running chocolatey version 0.12. And to get Caden Live, let's just go ahead and search for it real quick. You just go to go search Caden Live, just like before. And here we're gonna see one package found, it's Caden Live, so then we can just run the install, just like that. In addition, just it being a little bit easier to use, there's a lot more features, there's more packages. Uh, would I like to run the script? Yes. And now it's installing Caden Live. Caden Live has been installed super quick, super easy. Caden Live is now on my system. Now, one thing I wanted to show you too, on their website, that it's another really good resource to find packages, and they actually have a GUI, a graphical user interface for this. So I copied that code, I'm gonna close this out, I'm just gonna paste that on in there, give that a quick install, say yes to these scripts. Now we have an absolutely fantastic package manager solution uh, that features a lot of free and open source software. So here we can see this PC and this is all the applications that I'm able to manage with Chocolatey. If we go down here to Chocolatey, you can see a list of all the applications that we uh, easily have available to us. So some of the most popular things are uh, Acrobat Reader, we have Google Chrome, Flash Player, Firefox, uh, Visual Code Studio, a bunch of stuff here. If I switch this to A to Z order, it's gonna load that. I can actually open up the console output, which is just the basically the background processes we can see what chocolatey is doing in the background there we go so a lot of these applications are going to be a little less uh well known <laughs> let's go to the next page see if there's anything we can recognize oh here we go phenomenal well there's rocket dock there which might even be better but uh we, let's go ahead and grab a mail spring here so if we go over here we just do install and now it's going to go ahead and install MailSpring, and you can watch to see exactly what it is doing there. And there we go. I think it's just about done. So now we have the uh, MailSpring application, which I've talked about in the past. It is a phenomenal uh, email client. So yeah, that's Chocolatey. Wonderful uh, package management solution for Windows. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is something I've actually covered in a full dedicated video in the past, and that is Start All Back. It is paid software, it's like $5 for a license for this. It's definitely worth it, I would recommend it. And this application, one, it gives you a bunch of different customization options within your system, and two, it will go ahead and fix a lot of the uh, ridiculous user interface issues that you'll see within Windows. One of them being, if I open up an application such as a Notepad, and go to File, and you can see the blue highlight when I go through this menu here. Uh, if I go over to the personalized colors, I switch this to red, for example, you can see it's going to shift a lot of these things to red. We have red on the uh, little toggle. We have red accents over here. Down in the taskbar, we have some red. But if I go over to this menu, oh no, it's still blue. You would think it would be red. I'm going to go ahead and grab this real quick here. There we go. Here is the general user interface. So a lot of these categories here, you can switch it back to Windows 7, Windows 11 style. You have some taskbar settings and customization options. So for example, I could uh, center the taskbar stuff here, which is a normal thing, but then I could go ahead and separate it. So I have these over here and then my actual favorite icons there. And what I was talking about with that, uh, the blue accent color, if we go over to Explorer, I believe, I'm gonna switch this back to the Windows 11 command bar. Right here, colorize everything with accent color. Give that a select. And now, if I go to Notepad, go over here to File, 
you'll see it is now red and it's a little thicker, which is much better than what it looked like before anyways. So this application can do a lot more. If you want to see the full walkthrough of everything it can do, you can check out the video down below, or of course you could always just download it for yourself, try it out. It is definitely fun to play around with. So that was, that was it. That was five applications that you can use today to go ahead and make your Windows 11 experience just a little bit better. Uh, with all that, thank you to sponsor Squarespace. You guys are awesome. Thank you to the YouTube members and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. And thank you for watching this video. Uh, subscribe if you liked it. Dislike it if you hated it. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.